I'm Priscilla. Although I'm not as young as most people here, I think my story will interest you. My story is about how I received revenge on my ex-husband, Kingston, and ex-mother-in-law, Mary, almost eight years after our divorce. Yes, I'm single now, especially because my marriage and divorce scarred me for life. Well, I think there's little hope for me to date again for a while. I'm happy with my revenge against my ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law. Kingston and I met through a work colleague. He was my colleague's cousin and we met at one of his anniversary parties. When Kingston and I met, I discovered that he was a very sweet and charming guy. While he didn't have a huge income, I felt that he was a good person, so I decided to give him a chance. Initially, our relationship progressed beautifully. We were the perfect couple who couldn't keep our hands off each other. However, as the relationship progressed, Kingston started to reduce his affection and instead began making weird demands. He'd say, Why do you live so frugally, Priscilla? You earn so much but never treat me or yourself with anything. I'm even surprised your friends want to be with you. I mean, you don't match up to their standards. I already told you, Kingston. Just because I earn more money doesn't mean I should spend it all on my lifestyle. I have plans for the future, and I like saving for it. You are just hiding your money from people. It's just that you don't want to share it with me. That's not it, Kingston. It's not like I don't pamper you from time to time. You don't even have to look after me. Well, that's not enough. I have a dream of living a good life. I don't think I can be with you if you want to be such a cheapskate. Kingston's words hurt me back then. However, seeing the people around me, I thought that I was being unfair to my partner. I did make much more money than him, so I should be spending more money on him. I naively took this logic and ran with it. Well, I was happy with him for a while and even married him. Yes, I also very stupidly paid for most of the wedding out of my pocket, and I contributed more than 70% to our household expenses. At the moment, I thought that I was simply doing it for my life partner. However, I never thought I would be exploited for my love. You see, just a few months after my marriage to Kingston, his mom moved in with us. Yes, my mother-in-law simply walked in through the door with suitcases. She announced, So, Priscilla, you must be surprised to see me here. Well, I'm going to live here from now on. What? Wait a minute, Mary. Who the hell said this is okay? You can't just barge into our house and say what you want. Calm down, Priscilla. I am the one who invited Mom over. She will be staying with us from now on. Why are you being so dramatic? It's just my mom. She can't work for the rest of her life. But we never talked about this, Kingston. Why would you make such a decision without me? Look, you earn enough money to take care of the three of us, so I didn't think of consulting you. Your mom is my money anyway. I don't need your permission to bring my mom to my house. I was pretty pissed at both Kingston and Mary for being so disrespectful to me. However, I had no choice but to take in Mary. Our rented house was in both our names, even when I was the only one paying the bills. Kingston rarely had money to pay for anything. In the five years I stayed with him, he never bought me a single gift. Now don't get me wrong. I don't want extravagant gifts. I can live without them just fine. However, his total lack of effort in the relationship bothered me. When we married, I was stuck paying for his mom, who didn't even help with chores. One day I grew extremely tired of their attitudes. I vented to my work colleague about Mary and Kingston. That's when his face turned very glum. I could tell that he was hiding something. When I pressed him for information, he revealed to me that Kingston was addicted to gambling. He wanted to give me some money because he'd lost his previous job for cash theft. Guys, I felt like my world had fallen apart. At first, I refused to believe him. Then he sent me screenshots of their conversation. It even had pictures of Kingston gambling away with girls around him. I was sick to my stomach. I immediately went home and confronted Kingston. I know all about your gambling ways, Kingston. I also know that you got fired from your last job for cash theft. What is wrong with you? Oh, please, Priscilla. Not everyone wants to be a cheap middle-class worker like you. I will earn my millions. I'm slowly getting good at it. Soon I'll be successful and we'll be millionaires. You are out of your mind, Kingston. How the hell are you even getting money for gambling? Why, your savings account had some good cash in it. Did it come in handy for my last few games? I immediately froze, hearing what he just said. If one betrayal wasn't enough, there was another one coming. I had no idea that Kingston was secretly stealing from my savings. I was devastated. I immediately began screaming at him for touching my savings. I worked hard for years to build them. 
now they were all gone for Kingston's gambling ways. Hearing our fight, Mary came to see what was going on. Quite unsurprisingly, she took Kingston's side. She said, My son is an intelligent guy. I'm sure he will make it big through gambling. You are fighting with him for no reason. Your money is also his money. He has the right to spend it as he pleases. No, absolutely not. It was the money I saved through blood and sweat. You two pay almost nothing to the household. Hell, I didn't even know Kingston lost his job. He stole my money to gamble and make it look like he still has a job. Don't talk about my son like that. He is doing you a favor. You are not capable of being successful on your own. Only Kingston can make something out of his life. You are useless. You have some nerve calling me useless when all you have done is use my money. Neither you nor your son have helped me this last year. I have shouldered the family all along, and this is what I get in return. I'm done with you two. Kingston is just a failure who will never get anything in life. I am leaving. It was then that I decided that I needed to divorce Kingston. Sure, I did love him in all, but the betrayal was too much to take. Plus, I didn't want to stay with a man who had no problem spending my money on gambling. For a long time, I was already getting tired of our marriage. I knew that Kingston would never improve. He had proved that to me. So I decided to file for divorce. Getting an amicable divorce was a complete storm. My jerk of an ex did everything to try and keep me from leaving. First, it was begging me to stay. Then he started to blackmail me about taking half my assets and alimony in the divorce. His mother also ganged up on me and kept harassing me to make up with Kingston. It took several months for my lawyer to convince him to give up alimony and sharing of assets. I threatened to press charges for bank theft since Kingston had withdrawn money without my consent. That made him sign the divorce papers. However, at the end of the day, I still lost lots of money due to his gambling. But nothing stopped Kingston and Mary from making a final insult towards me. They said, You haven't won, Priscilla. You're nothing but a worthless witch. You might be earning a lot now, but one day I will be richer than you. You will have to beg me for money. We won't forget this insult, Priscilla. You abandoned my son and me when we needed you. One day you will pay for it. Mark my words, Priscilla. Kingston will be more successful than you. Let's wait and see what happens. A day will come when I will make you eat your words. We will see who ends up doing the begging. Ultimately, when the divorce was finalized, I left my job to join a new one. I wanted to be away from my past life, and especially didn't want to be around Kingston's cousin, so I took a job out of state. I got a promotion, which made the offer even more lucrative. Over the years that passed, I started to save again while working my butt off. I was able to rise through the ranks and get fast promotions. At the end of eight years, I had saved enough money to invest in the company I was working for. After a meeting with all the company heads, I finally became a director. It was like my dream came true. From what I had heard, Kingston kept indulging in gambling and lost what little money and assets he had. Kingston and Mary were moving to my state because a lot of their debtors were after them. After moving here, Kingston married a rich heiress, Layla, whose father is a business associate of mine. He had been complaining about Layla and how he was suspicious of his new son-in-law. He also didn't like Mary and considered her to be a freeloader. I kept quiet because I knew it wasn't time yet to destroy Kingston. I was leading a pretty good life until I got a rather unexpected call from Mary. I heard from my assistant that Kingston had applied for a position at the company. I was kind of curious and wanted to see if it was finally time for me to give him his just desserts. Turns out I was just on point. Mary called me to gloat about Kingston and their new life. She said, Hello, Priscilla, this is Mary. I hope you haven't forgotten me yet. Ah, Mary, how could I forget my dear mother-in-law who has mooched off me for three years and helped her son steal my money? Long time no see, Mary. Well, I have some news for you today, Priscilla. It's been a while since we have talked. Yes, Mary, it has been a while. So what made you make this call? Remember how you called my son a failure? He's married to a beautiful girl and also found a new job, you know that pays him 120 k per year. See, Priscilla, after all this while, my son has become successful. It's your loss. I heard this and started to laugh. To me, her words were extremely funny. Most of what she said was a lie, but she didn't realize that I already knew the truth. Instead, she seemed quiet and confused when I finally got my laughter under control. I said, first of all, dear ex-mother-in-law, Kingston only gets 60 k a year. There is no reason to lie to people you know. 
And yes, I already have all the information about him. What do you mean? Are you accusing me of lying to you? And who told you that he earned 60k? Well, no one had to, Mary. Do you want to know how I found out? Well, my assistant was the one who interviewed him yesterday. That is impossible. There is no way you are related to the company. It's a big enterprise and you are a worthless woman. Here's some news for you, Mary. I am a director at this company, so I'm well aware of how much Kingston can get. By the way, you are bold, assuming he has got the job. Well, my son is pretty smart and won't have trouble getting the job. You and I both know that. Here's some more news for you, Mary. I checked his name on the list of candidates, and my assistant placed him at the bottom. Like I said eight years ago, no sane company would hire him with a gap in his record. And don't worry, I will gladly inform his beautiful wife just how you and Kingston have been fooling her. When I said this, Mary started to change her stance completely. I could tell that my words got to her. She might be old, but she's not that dumb. I knew she had already Googled to see if my name popped up in connection with the company. By now, she knew that I wasn't lying. So Mary resorted to begging. Okay, Priscilla, look. I see you have made it big in life, but you should also understand that my son has a lot of contributions to your success. You should keep that in mind and give him the job. Can't you just stop making me laugh, Mary? After everything you two have done, do you expect me to help you? I mean, you called me today to gloat about Kingston's apparent success. I just want people to know that he's not a loser. I was trying to prove a point. Anyway, he's married to a rich and beautiful girl. I'm sure she's even richer than you and will support him. Is that so, Mary? Then I think you will have no problem with me telling her the truth. I did see on her Facebook that she thinks her husband has a 120k job and owns a lot of properties. Mind if I tell her the truth? No, 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 Priscilla. Listen to me. Don't do this to Kingston. You've come so far in life. Why do you want to dwell on the past? Have some pity on us and give Kingston the job. This is the least you can do after being such an unsupportive wife. Listen to me, Mary, very carefully. I will not help Kingston. He is perfectly capable of destroying his reputation. At this point, I'll never vouch for him, not even from a professional point of view. So instead of bothering me with your fake flexes, you should help your son find a good job. Good luck with that, Mary. Trust me, you will need it. I said that and hung up the phone. Mary did keep calling me back, but I never picked up. I had no interest in indulging in her tantrums. Instead, I quickly got to work. I informed my assistant that I wanted everyone who didn't get selected to receive the rejection letter. He told me that it would be done soon. Then I simply sat and waited for Kingston to call me. I knew he would have my phone number from Mary. As I predicted, Kingston called me within an hour of receiving the mail. I picked up his call because I wanted a first-hand experience of his humiliation. He did sound desperate and nothing like the arrogant jerk that I divorced. What do you want, Kingston? I see that my dear ex-mother-in-law gave you my number already, Priscilla. I know you are one of the directors at the company I interviewed for. I just got the rejection letter. Please do something and help me get the job. I know you can help if you want to. Why do you think I would jeopardize my professional life for you? Do you think I am mad? You have some nerve to ask me to give you a job after all these years. Look, I know I didn't treat you right back then, but I was still your husband. We do have some good memories. Please consider those and give me the job. My wife will leave me if I don't get a job soon. I know that you have lied to Layla about your financial situation. Guess what, Kingston? I know her family. I also have her number from her dad. All I have to do is tell the truth and let her be free. No, 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 please don't do this. Don't destroy my marriage, Priscilla. Layla will divorce me if she finds out. And if she divorces you, all your plans will fail. You won't be able to touch her inheritance or her money. And you won't be able to get the life you always wanted, huh, Kingston? Kingston went silent after hearing me say this. I knew I had hit the jackpot with this information. My real revenge had just started. Kingston immediately started to beg me not to tell Layla about everything. I simply hung up the phone on him. Next, I sent a quick text to Layla and asked her to call me. I explained who I was and hoped Kingston hadn't reached her before me. When she did call me, I said, Hi, Layla. My name is Priscilla and I'm your father's friend. I also happen to be the ex-wife of your now husband. There are a few things that you should know about Kingston. He has been lying to you. What do you mean, Priscilla? What is he lying about? Well, 
I guess you think he is pretty rich and up to your family standards. Well, he is not rich at all. He has absolutely nothing of value. You posted on Facebook that he got a 120K job. Well, I'm the director of the company he mentioned, and he only applied for a 60K job, which he didn't get. What the hell are you talking about? But he told me. I know what he told you, Layla. I've seen it on your Facebook. I know you might not believe me, but you can ask your dad. He can easily find out if Kingston is lying. But I don't understand. Why would Kingston lie to me? Because he wanted to take over your inheritance and properties. He always wanted a luxurious life for himself and he is a gambler. Unfortunately, we divorced because I refused to fund his lifestyle and support his gambling habits. His mother supports him anyway. I don't know what he told you, but that's the truth. Any crazy accusations, you can ask around if you are doubtful about me. I don't want you to be stuck with a liar and a loser. Thank you, Priscilla. I'll dig for more information and find out. Also, don't worry. I made him sign a prenup and only agreed to remove it once he gets a job. Looks like that won't be happening after all. With that being done, I simply finished my part of the revenge. The aftermath of everything was glorious. Mary and Kingston at first kept calling me and telling me to get Kingston a job. They begged me to pity them and help them out. Meanwhile, Layla was on Kingston's case and uncovered the truth herself. I was the one who handed over some information to her father. Her father was also pretty mad and told me that he would see the end of Kingston's lies. After two days, the texts I received from my ex-mother-in-law and ex-husband flipped. They kept calling me a witch and a jerk for destroying Kingston's marriage. Layla and her dad confronted him and then filed for divorce. Since Layla still had the prenup in place, none of her assets would go to Kingston. Instead, Kingston would now have to hire a lawyer to work through the divorce. Mary and Kingston kept harassing me until I threatened to expose them online. That made them stop contacting me. Last I heard, Kingston still comes by our company to see if there is a position open. I also heard from sources that Mary and Kingston are now constantly fighting about money problems. I guess now Mary will finally know what it's like to be stuck with a man-child for the rest of her life. Thanks for watching. How did you find the story? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more awesome stories like this. Your feedback and support mean a lot.